Welcome to Money Mondays with Melissa, where we talk about financial empowerment while exploring financial assistance available through local, state, and federal governments each month with a diverse group of subject matter experts. Chicago, are you ready to get financially empowered? Well, we've got just what you need. Without further ado, give it up for your Chicago City Treasurer, Melissa Conyers Irvin. Hello and welcome to our Money Mondays with Melissa. Before we dive into today's insightful session, there are a couple of important points to go over. Firstly, we're excited to inform you that today's session has been recorded and will be available on viewing for Facebook and YouTube channels within the next 24 hours. If you encounter any technical difficulties during this live event, please don't hesitate to use the chat feature to inform us and we'll do our best to assist you promptly. Additionally, we invite you to actively engage with us through the chat. Feel free to send in any questions or comments you may have during the presentation. And I now turn over to our city treasurer, Melissa Conyers Irving, Lauren Smith, founder of Chicago Black Restaurant Week, and Mary Green, founder of Black Women's Expo and CEO of MGPG Events. Good afternoon. Welcome to Money Mondays with Melissa. We resume 2024. And for those that are seeing us for the first time, Happy New Year. We are so excited to have these wonderful ladies joining us this Monday afternoon. We have the illustrious Mary Green in the house and everyone knows the Black Women Expo. Uh, we also have Lauren Smith, and we just celebrated completing Black Restaurant Week. We have some amazing women, and I am so excited. Thank you both ladies for Thank joining you. us this afternoon. Thank you for having us. For Wonderful. sure. Thank you. This is exciting. This is, and I just love what we're doing, and we are here to really showcase you. It is all about Lauren and Mary this <laughs> afternoon. All right. And so I'm just going to jump right in because I want you ladies to just go ahead and have the ample time to talk. I want people to see just how great you are. Um, so I'll start with the first question, which is how has entrepreneurial ventures really contributed to the local economy? We'll talk about entrepreneurship in general at first, and then I want to get into some details about you. Talk to us about job creation, increased consumer spending, or any other impact as a result of really entrepreneur, entrepreneurial ventures for the local economy. Well, I'll start off by just saying that, you know, when I talk about anything like that, it's certainly around the Black Women's Expo. Um, being our 29th anniversary that we are working on right now, that will be August 2nd through the 4th of this year. You know, the, the real story is, is that none of us thought about it in that manner when we, when we began this whole journey. I mean, 29 years ago, we were just doing something for the radio station and thought it would last a year or two. Uh, it took off, it became and has become the platform for so many small businesses. So right away in terms of how entrepreneurship, I mean, having 400 small businesses on your show over a three day weekend that when we used, when we started, we were down around 200 or so, but seeing how that has grown over the years and how many businesses are coming to be a part of the show where we make it affordable for them to be there. But so many of them are jump starting new businesses or continuing with businesses they've had for a number of years. We have people that come back over and over again. So we know right away that we are creating jobs. <laughs> I mean, just even creating jobs at McCormick Place and what we're doing, you know, our show is there every year. They can depend on those dollars coming in. Yes. Um, our general services contract is there with us every year. And that's a, that's a big piece of our expense for the show. Uh, and his show, his his business has grown. So you just see it all the way around, you know, all of the subcontractors that we use, how we're creating jobs and moving their businesses forward as well. So didn't think about it when we started that way. But as you look at it, and we've been asked in the last couple of years what kind of impact we're having economically for the city. When you think about the hotels and the transportation, the restaurants, you know, we have vendors that come from New York, vendors that come from Atlanta. So we're starting to really take a look at that and hopefully put those numbers together together um, very soon. Love it. Lauren? Well, I it was more or less initially it started out to support my friends that had restaurants. A lot of my 
had restaurants back almost 10 years ago now. And I said, I want people to know who you are. I want to taste all of this good food. I don't want to sound biased because you're my friend. You actually have a great product. So now, fast forward to nine years later, has turned into, we we probably had well over 200 Chicago uh, and surrounding area, black businesses, black food, beverage, and dessert businesses that have participated. And the, the growth that we see is that, you know, and I, I can't take the credit for this, but we've seen them open additional doors. We've seen them hire more employees. We've seen them have a, a phenomenal first quarter of any new year. And that is always a good thing for a business. We want to have a great first quarter so we can kind of project some things going on throughout the rest of the year. So for me, entrepreneurship really idea and having the courage to shoot out there and just let it take off. And that's exactly yeah. what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You've got to have the courage and, and, and the desire to let it do whatever it's going to do. And I'm just grateful for what it's doing. And so with that same vein, how how has this fostered a sense of community um, for both the um, Black Restaurant Week and Black Women Expo? Um, talk to us about how these events and these weeks that you have organized, how it not only has enhanced the community, but also collaboration with other businesses is what I think is also very important. And, and both of you, right, with the Black Women right. Expo, um, and I, I don't know, you call it Black Women Expo, but I mean, I've seen so many different <laughs> vendors there um, that want to be a part of the Black Women Expo. And then with um, Chicago Black Restaurant Week, I'd love to hear more about the collaboration with the restaurants here in Chicago, but I'm confident that that's going to go even beyond that. So I'll start with you, Lauren. Okay, sure. So as far as just what it has done, it really has increased awareness of what is in your area. There are a lot of people that live in these amazing Black-owned food, beverage, and dessert businesses and have no idea that they're Black-owned. And I think that's very important to make sure that people know about these Black businesses, but two, that they actually have what they've been looking for. Because, you know, sometimes we'll go far and wide to find something. But if you can find something that is literally a block away from your home and then you can grab your girlfriends, grab your guy friends, grab your fraternity, sorority members, family members, get them to all come out and, have, you know, we listen, cuisine, food, fellowship. So when you can get people to come out and just have a great meal at a black owned establishment, it's a sense of pride because and especially if you're taking your kids, that's why it's a it's like a family event, because when kids can see, oh, this is a black business. I can do something like this. Right. And I've worked with students in alternative schools and various situations that went to the culinary world. So if they see so many of us doing this thing and then they're like, Miss Smith, I can really do something like this. I'm like, you absolutely can. Who told you you can't? So if they can <laughs> see this type of thing then they'll know they have a chance out here. So the more we put it out there about black businesses and what we do, that is going to encourage the younger generations to come on in and let, let's let's take part of this culinary this world. So it just fosters more community, fosters the fellowship and gets people outside to see what's around, you know, the block. Right? Yes. And I see the same thing with the, with the expo. I mean, um, you see women coming together, friends, family, sisters, getting boosts together. We don't talk about that you can share boosts, <laughs> but we're finding out that so many people do to be there. We and know how to make it work. <laughs> we know how to make it work. And I see women starting businesses and, and beginning products that they never had. But they have they have a platform. They have a place that they can afford to come. It is and it is downtown in Chicago at McCormick Place. So you see people starting businesses. You see communities coming together. It's not just South Side. It's West Side. It's all of the community coming together to be a part of the show. But one of the wonderful things that I love to see and talk about community and family is uh, a couple of years ago, I was standing at the front of the expo and watch this, you know, watching the crowd come in. And on Saturdays, it can be pretty flowing. And I saw like four generations, you know, the grandmama and her daughter and her daughter and the little tiny granddaughter. And they were dressed to the nines. You know, it was like they were going to church, but they were coming to the expo and they had their tickets, you know, that they had got from, you know, and half price from Walgreens. We make sure that people can attend and be a part of the show. So that's, that's our way of of creating that sense of community. We're not trying to just, you know, gouge and make big bucks. We're trying to bring people together. 
And by the way, the Black Women Expo, it is in August every year, same time. Um, and it is at McCormick Place, typically, yes. right? Right. And what's interesting with that is, is there are some people on the south and west sides of Chicago specifically that would not visit the McCormick Place any other time. Right. And so I think that that really speaks volumes in so many ways. Um, that being one of them is really you both, when I think about it, you're introducing the community, yeah. especially those in underserved communities to more. I mean, Lauren, we may think that there's only black restaurants on the south and west sides of Chicago. Where are the black restaurants? Right. They and are. maybe you can ask, where are they? <laughs> are they all <laughs> when I the tell city? you, listen, because and see another point is Chicago Black Restaurant Week covers also South Suburbs. We cover the West Side. Oh. We cover we cover the Chicago land area. So we've had businesses in Harvey, Flossmore, uh, Matson, of course, Chicago, West Chicago, East Side of Chicago. So oh, we yeah. want people to get out and see what's out here. So you gotta know, like. I had no idea this was right by my house. You know, you don't have exactly. to go far. Yeah, we want people to get out I and know, experience. I've noticed there's a lot of black restaurants, a number of them on North Side. Oh, yes. You're right about that. Yes, that are cropping up that I didn't know about. But through your uh, program and your platform, we're finding out even more about that. I think that is awesome, by yeah. the way. And I just thank you for the exposure, right? Because I'll tell you, being a young lady born and raised in Chicago, um, you know, Inglewood, West Side. I cannot tell you at what age I visited the McCormick Place. I'm just going really? to be very honest with you. Um, and so parents bringing their kids and, yes. and having that exposure. I don't, I don't know, Mary, if you really understand how much of an impact that alone makes for some people in the community. And I probably, I, I don't think that I did. I'll be honest with you, uh, Madam Treasurer. I, I knew that there are still some people who don't come downtown and shop and, you know, participate in that way. Um, McCormick, from the very beginning, I don't know why as a radio station, we decided we're having this downtown. You know, uh, we want our community to be able to be all around uh, uh, the city of Chicago. And when we first started, I will tell you, it was, wasn't easy. It wasn't like we could just call and say, oh, we'd like to rent some space. They're like, right. Being that it was a radio station, it was fine. You know, they finally allowed us to have that um, that date, those dates. But when we went to general services contractors to try to get them aboard to, to do all of our booths, we weren't getting callbacks. Uh, whether we were too small or whether we were too black, I'm not exactly sure. But we kept, you know, we kept at it until we found a company that could work with us. And we haven't looked back. That's wonderful. Well, let's talk about um, on the let's continue with talking about empower empowerment. I want to empower individuals. I always talk about financial empowerment being my mission as a treasurer. But we can empower individuals in so many ways through mentorship, through job training, through skill building. Um, talk to me about how what you all are doing in your ventures and how you are empowering individuals, especially individuals in underserved communities. And that's what I'm so excited about. Diversity has to be intentional. It's intentional what you ladies are doing. And I know that you're making great impact because of that. You want, you want to go, Mary, or you want me to start? Yeah. Go ahead, Mary. Go ahead, Lauren. Yeah. OK. Go so, ahead, Mary. Well, oh, go ahead, Mary. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that, um, you know, in terms of um, what we're doing to empower, I mean, a part of our expo, the m major part of our show is workshops and seminars. So we, we are tackling every issue that, you know, we face as a community. That's how it started. Uh, it was all around our seminars and our workshops. I mean, we were getting calls at the radio station saying, you guys aren't doing enough public affairs programming anymore. The FCC had relaxed rules, and it was like at my job to figure out a way to satisfy the community. And I said, I can let's do an expo, <laughs> you know, and have seminars. And we we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 over the weekend wow. because so many women speakers come to us with something they want to talk about and that we need to talk about. Like right now, we're going to be doing a leadership conference this year uh, as a part of it on a Friday, uh, which is going to tackle this whole DE&I. 
Yes. Uh, we've got to talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, and the companies that want to get rid of that or people that think it should be put away. So, you know, we have a lot of things we talk about. So I think we're educating our women uh, on so many issues and so many topics. And that and that's part of what this expo has been always about. I would probably have to say that as far as what Chicago Black Restaurant Week is doing to empower individuals, it's making them feel a sense of value, a sense of purpose. And when I say value, you know, black businesses, as far as food, are known for, oh, little hole in the wall type, you know, uh, greasy <laughs> kitchen situations, right? But now Chicago Black Restaurant Week is opening everybody's eyes to the fact that we also carry Michelin star businesses. I mean, the hole in the walls, don't get me wrong, I'm going there too. But I'm all going to participate and partake in the Michelin star. I'm going to go to the smoothie spots. I'm going to go and try some vegan spots. I'm empowering people to let them know your restaurant deserves to be seen. It deserves to be spotlighted. And so when those businesses get phone calls from old TV network. You got stalled, Lauren, and you're into yeah. it as well. Um, if you hear me, Lauren, you may have to go back out and come um, come in. She will. And um, I'll let her finish that. And let me also ask you, Mary, um, when she comes back in, I want to talk about how the role of the entrepreneur plays in really creating vibrant and urban spaces. Okay. And I think that's certainly going to go into what Lauren is talking about. Exactly. Um, but you tell me as well how that has helped with really creating that vibrant urban feel, the space right. that we need to feel, especially in certain communities, right? Well, I will tell you, I went I went by a, a pop-up shop yesterday. Oh. Uh, uh, I love pop-ups. <laughs> I know. It was a pop-up vendor um, shop, and there probably was about 30 vendors in there, black, all black vendors, and that was everything imaginable. It was very tight. Um, but um, what you saw was, you know, when I walked around and people realized that I was with the Black Women's Expo, I was able to talk to a number of young women who sang, or women who were just saying, I've always wanted to be there. I don't know, you know if I can do it. And I was encouraging them, not selling booths or anything, but you can do this. You can come, you, you can empower yourself That's and come right. to the show. You need to bring that product forward. And what we did get on the mic and talk to them about the show and about a sale coming up, just so they know it's, it's, it's possible. Yes. And so, you know, um, and what we see every year is we, we have an exhibitor meeting. Um, this is just talking about the expo, but in everything we do, we did a Bagels and Bosses brunch uh, a it's year bagels ago. Bagels and Bosses. Okay. And it was around Black restaurant. It was about women in restaurants or women in food. And it was like 150 women showed up on a Saturday morning to talk. And we had brunch, uh, but to hear from other women about how to get in that industry. So I think, you know, everything that we're doing is, whether I knew it or not, was to empower women and, um, and to empower our community. To, if I can do this, not knowing at all what we were doing when we started this expo, I believe me when I tell you, but I was going to not be denied. I'm like, okay, it can't be that hard, right? We put some people together in a room. <laughs> you, know, yeah. get, you know, you start off small and then you say, and then it keeps growing and you, and you learn along the way. Uh, don't think we haven't been beat or, you know, something didn't happen that people probably charged us more than they should have. But, you know, we kept going and we're here 29 years later. I hope. Lord, that is amazing. 29 I know, I can't even believe it. I can't even believe wow. it. Wow. No. Everyone looks forward to it. I tell you that everyone looks forward to it. Wow. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about really beyond um, immediate gain. Okay. Um, how do you envision the Black Women Expo leaving a legacy? I mean, 29 years, that speaks yeah. for itself, right? Yeah. But how do you envision it leaving a, a legacy? And tell me, what steps have you taken to yeah. ensure reliance on that, even for the community? Wow. Well, you know, I have been talking to a number of people recently. I mean, I, I, want, to, I want to be able to definitely leave a legacy, but also to step aside. Next year is wow. 30 years. I, I'm putting this out here. Next year is 30 years, um, Melissa. And, uh, you know, you know when it's time for, yes. you know, some other people to come in. Not that I will just go away, but yes. 30 years is definitely a long time. And there are other things to do. 
uh, and other ventures to start. Um, but I've been talking to a couple people and I, I, had, I was talking about it at the BLC awards presentation last week and somebody's eyes lit up. She was listening and she was like, Hmm, you know, and I know this is something she could do. So, you know, I, um, gosh, um, I don't want to say that, you know, I'm ready to leave or, or, or leave this production. Um, but I will always be a part of it. But I think that right there is, is, is leaving the legacy. I mean, people ask me, have been asking me for years, when will you stop? Mm. I can never stop. The show is part of the community. It's part of Chicago now. So somebody's got to do it. <laughs> it is. It is part. Yes. It is part of Chicago and it's something that we look forward to each and every year. And I think too, I'll ask you while we're waiting and Lauren, she's trying her best to get yeah. back. It's going to work out. But I'll ask you, um, how do you encourage people like the ones that told you I don't know if I can be at the Black Women Expo. Because one thing that I've learned is that there are so many people with a lot of talent. Yes. But they may not feel that they can be one of those vendors or can right. introduce their business, their small business, their products. What would you say to them? Wow. I probably give them some history on how it started for us or how it started for me. Uh, I, I laugh when um, the radio station decided, okay, you can do the show. We'll back you. And in fact, leave and go do it. And three years into it, I walked out the door and moved three blocks away. I was so not informed on what we were doing that when the city walked in there and said, where's your business license? I, I didn't have one. Mm. So, yes, I didn't even know I needed one. So they gave me some time to get my license uh, for the business, but I was there doing the expo for them in the world's largest steppers competition, which we also produced and started. So, um, you know, it's just that you can. I, I don't know. My mother always instilled in us to just keep moving forward. She had a phrase, keep putting one foot before the other. And it will happen. You know, if don't give up. I was talking to a friend yesterday and he said he teaches his students not to give up so easily. That's right. You know, and and sometimes we do. You know, we we we're gonna get pushed. Don't get, don't think we're not gonna get pushed back uh, by all the, the the roadblocks they're gonna put in our way. Uh, but you, you go around them, find another way if you're really you know if you're really into this. But yes. yeah, just do not give up so easily. And believe me, it hasn't been easy all of these years. I mean, hard had, work does pay off. It does. Mm -hmm. We've had lean years. It does pay off, <laughs> but hard work does pay off. Mm -hmm. And you'll eventually get there. So I try to encourage them that uh, some of the young people, um, when we do our meeting with them before the event, we find that a lot of them are first time business owners and first time coming to the show, first time business owners. And we give them a little bit of, uh, of tricks or tips on how to be at the expo. I mean, you can walk down an aisle and stand in front of a, some booth and they will never get up and say anything to you. Wow. They're well, they're probably uncomfortable too. They're new, but that is not how you're going to get someone interested in what you have to sell or, or product or service that you have. So, we talk to them about what kind of um, you know, how they need to present themselves at the show. And I and they laugh because I said on Sunday, last day of the expo, uh, late in the afternoon, here I come because this is the only time I have to look around and to shop and to visit with some of the vendors. Headsets on, be we all across my chest, and you don't even speak to me. And if anybody's going to buy, guess who's going to buy? You just bought from, from us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they laugh, but they but but because they recognize that that does happen. So we, we encourage them to to just keep moving, keep keep moving forward, you know, talk to other people, get a mentor, like you said. Uh, get a coach. I have, I have so many friends that are coaches and coaching people through businesses, um, but find some some assistance out there. And so Lauren, um, her camera is having technical difficulties. And guess what? When it comes to technology, there is nothing you can do. Lauren um, has tried to come in and out of this segment several times, but the camera does what it wants to do. So <laughs> right. we are just happy to have her at this juncture, at least by audio. And Lauren, I want you to go back to the statement that you were making when I was asking you about really how 
entrepreneurs talk, we were talking about um, skill building, we were talking about mentorship, but then it also leads into the question I was asking Mary about how is this what you what you're doing creating a vibrant urban space, which vibrancy is needed in our community. So there was a lot of things that I just said, I and know. Lawrence, I'm like Lawrence, audio isn't working either. But you, but so you know, when you mentioned about the vibrancy, I didn't, I didn't answer that that okay. that question. But and Lauren, when you can hear us, when you you know, we'll in. let you know if we hear your voice. That's what we'll do. Go ahead. Yeah. On the vibrancy, I mean, I look at entrepreneurs as just being a vibrant community anyway. I mean, some people are way too vibrant. I mean, they're over the top. You know, they're so into the product or the service or what they're doing. But I, I think that that and they're so unique. There's so many businesses so unique. I ran into a couple that are doing something on marketing uh, of, of investments for married couples. I mean, it was just something so different how they talked about it. And um, I said, you got to bring that conversation to the expo. You have to. I mean, there are so many married women that are there. But, you know, money is always the issue that they say number one issue that breaks us up. So, you know, we out talking to people, as I said, they're already excited uh, as entrepreneurs because they're trying to move their product forward. So I think that's that's number one. All right, Lauren, let's see if you can unmute and we hear you now. Look at that. And I mean, Lauren is oh, wow. the Chicago Black Restaurant Week. I know. You know, I'm going to tell you, um, as we move into 2024, we had um, been doing some of these segments in studio. So uh, there's nothing like when you're face to face, right? Um, the there isn't. There so isn't. As is pros and cons. Uh, Mary, I'll ask you um, and, and Lauren, just, just really trying to get in and out. Um, yes. But let me ask you this, and, and I'll ask her when she comes on, what is your why? Tell me that. Because I, I always say my why, my why. Like if anyone follows me on social media, I'll say my why. I always do hashtag my why. Um, because I think that with everything that we do, there has to be a why. We talk about being intentional. Yes. What is your why? Right. I think Laura might be up and ready. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Yes. Perfect. Can you hear Perfect. me? Yes. Can you hear us? Okay. Yep. Absolutely. You know how it goes with technology, child. Yes, so now, so you can do about at all. So you were talking about what my is. Yes. The why for me was just because, again, black businesses, we need our own space. The audio is going in and out. Yeah. Not how the but, camera goes in and out and the audio, audio. In and out. You got it now? You got there it now? You go. Okay. So for over a gazillion years, we've always had to fight just to get the basics of anything. And, you know, whether it's the right to vote, whether it's to even go into a shoe store to try on shoes, whether it's to drink water. So I just feel like if we have our own space, it's our own sense of pride and what it is that we have going on. I just don't feel like we get enough credit for all of yeah. the good that we have and what we do. So we have to create those spaces for ourselves. You know, and we're always inclusive of everybody else, but we got to also be able to say, hey, this is my moment. I deserve this moment. So this is what it is. That's yeah. my why, because I feel like we need a moment. <laughs> this is my moment. That's interesting. And as you say, we deserve this moment. That's interesting. Mary, your why? You know, my why has probably been the kinds of calls that we get every year uh, when we're in production for the expo. Uh, my why was, I've got two whys. One was the, the uh, family I spoke about a few minutes ago, Generation. We call this an intergenerational show now because of everybody comes and we have to try to figure out how to satisfy and uh, provide, you know, programming for everyone. But we would get a call every year, right before the expo, probably a couple of weeks when it was really heavy in terms of promotion and marketing on radio and television from people who were not black that want to know why we got to have a black woman's expo. 
why we got to call it black. That's my why. Mm. And uh, my staff would tell me every time that call came in again, and I would never get never get the call. And I just happened to pick up the phone this particular year. And my response was, because you have one every year. You have one every weekend. And she was like, what? And I said, you don't have to have one to call it this, because you have one every weekend. And that call ended, and she never called back. But that's the why, because we don't have you know, the same opportunities. Um, and if, if, if we, we just don't, and if we can provide this opportunity and this platform for all of our small businesses out here, and I give away probably more than we, <laughs> than we, than we sell, um, uh, because I want them to be a part of what we do. And I That's want them right. to have an opportunity to make it. That's right. Yeah. And Lauren, let me ask you this because, um, I had an opportunity to ask Mary, um, how do you envision Chicago Black Restaurant Week, its legacy? Talk to me about that. Well, for me, as far as the legacy piece, I'm so glad that you are asking me this question. My my ultimate thing has always been to make sure whatever I'm doing is in a position of service. So the legacy for me is service because all of this really just started out as me feeling like, OK, yeah, I want my friends to get notoriety for what they're doing with their you know businesses. But more or less, what Lauren, what are you doing to further enhance your community? What is it that you can do that will make you feel fulfilled in whatever it is that you choose? I love food and I love my community. So I said, let me figure out how I'm going to marry the two of these and make it work. And it just worked. And it it really started out as me wanting to serve. And um, I tell a lot of people this, you know, I'm a member of a sorority. I'm a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. But service didn't start there for me. Service started in my home with my parents. They taught me serving. So, so I felt like, yeah, Lauren, this is in you. So figure out whatever it is that you want to do and do it well. And I think that this will leave a lasting impression on generations to come because I'm, I'll be able to pass it down to my niece and nephews if they want to take over the charge. But it's got to be about service for me. Always about service. And then I'm going to also ask you, ladies, before I open up to any questions, and I also ask you to make close, closing comments. Mm -hmm. But I was just thinking, I know that, um, Mary, you are beyond Chicago now, right? Through these 29 years. I know you are in Atlanta, I believe, and maybe others. But also, um, after, I, after you answer, Mary, Lauren, I want you to talk about how you envision beyond Chicago for Black Restaurant Week. Um, and what may be to come with that. So Mary, let's start with you because it started 29 years ago as this idea, right? It did. Um, as a, and look right. at it today. As an idea 29 years and ago. I want someone to really listen to this because yeah. this can be a real testimony for someone mm -hmm. that doubts their vision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. It was definitely not anything that we thought would make it this long. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the night before the show opened, the very first year, we were in the office uh, on the floor crying. It was such an overwhelming thing. We knew that we had a, a big, you know, following crowd coming. We had put together a really good show, but we were just not ready for it and didn't have the team and the staff for it. Um, when we came down to cut the ribbon, there were so many people in the lobby of McCormick, we couldn't almost get through. And we did a ribbon cutting with our advisory committee of women, but uh, we made it through that. Um, so your question is, how do we get to the legacy? Beyond Chicago. Beyond Chicago. So we have been in other cities. We have been in Atlanta. We have been in um, Detroit, uh, mm -hmm. Atlanta, four years. We've been in Orlando. We've been in Houston. I mean, I'm sorry, Dallas. Uh, and we've even taken the show a couple of years to the D to D.C. for the um, for the caucus. Congressional Black Caucus event, take, taking some of our sponsors and a few of our exhibitors. Um, but as always in the last couple of years, it took a good friend, a marketing friend to say, Mary, why do you think you can pick up this Chicago show that has this long lasting legacy and is wonderful and huge, huge crowds, huge sponsorships and all of that and take it to another city? Because none of those cities have even rivaled Chicago. And I thought about it and I said, you're right. So we are up for a tourism grant. 
We have never filed for a grant. We just filed for a grant a couple months back, and uh, the, the, the word is good that we may be getting that tourism grant. We want to market outside of Chicago and make this the destination event. Oh, that is awesome. That's awesome. I'm like, Essence doesn't go anywhere but New Orleans. Mm. So that's that's the, that's the 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 future. Hey, people are going to be flying in from all over to come here for that. Look at that! It's a I wonderful love city. It. Everybody loves Chicago. I and, love it. And hopefully, the restaurant we could be the same time too, or somewhere around, and then we can get people to go to all the black restaurants. So I was going to say it helps our economy. Yes, and that also, as um, Lauren, you answer that going beyond Chicago. How did you choose that particular week? Or was it just like, oh, we're just going to do it this week? Oh, so I love this question. This is one of my favorite questions. Dr. Carter Godwin Woodson, Negro History Week back in 1926 was always the second week in February. And I don't want any of our African-American or Black people to be forgotten, especially the ones that were able to introduce our beauty and our power and our progression to the world. So I said, we're not going to forget about Dr. Carter G. Woodson. We're going to hold Chicago Black Restaurant Week to fall on the second week in February so that we can not only honor his legacy, but we want to put it right where the Black people are going to always be. Yeah, Black History is 365. Please don't get more 366 when we have a leap year. Don't get me wrong. (laughs) However... Dr. Carter G. Woodson is credited for Negro History Week. And I said, second week in February, that's what we're going to do, Chicago Black Restaurant Week. And it comes immediately after Chicago Restaurant Week, which is like you get like a two week break right before Chicago Black Restaurant Week. And people are always saying, Lord, these people trying to kill my pockets. Yes. Go out and eat, get all the food. Well, you got to eat. You got to eat. eat. That's yeah. all I'm saying. That's yeah. all. And that's all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. And so, how do you envision this? Um, beyond Chicago and its neighboring suburbs. Sure. So here's the thing. There is a global black restaurant week that covers every other state in, uh, you know, in the United States, Texas, Atlanta, you know, Georgia, all of that type of stuff. But my ultimate thing for Chicago is standalone. We don't have to be lumped in with a large number of people because Chicago thing here and all of the restaurants that we have here are absolutely amazing so it's like no Chicago which is why Chicago had to have Chicago Markham Harvey Flossmore you know West Suburbs it didn't matter what it was I just wanted to make sure people knew Chicago has the food baby you just got to get here and so I have had so many people call or email me and saying oh i have a group of people we're coming in from ohio and we're actually going to be there for chicago black restaurant week send us the list absolutely you got it or my company has given us a stipend to support chicago black restaurant week absolutely i'm sending you the list right now i get invitations from political officials all over everywhere saying oh my goodness i will be in chicago da, 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 da. can we get that you absolutely can have the list because i want you to eat Again, what'd you say, Miss Conyers Irvin? You got to eat. Yeah. So if you're going to eat <laughs> yes. good, you might as yeah. well come to Chicago. And even yeah. though I'm from Memphis, I'm going to let y'all know, Chicago is the food mecca. I can't even take nothing away from it. We, yes. we the barbecue mecca, but Chicago is the food mecca. So, yeah, that's that. Well, I am excited. Um, and I will tell you, ladies, um, I have been to the Black Women Expo a number of years, even mm-hmm. becoming before becoming the treasurer of Chicago, even before becoming an elected official. And I will tell you, um, I am excited about Black Restaurant Week and more that we can do mm-hmm. to promote small businesses, diverse businesses. Um, since becoming treasurer, I said financial empowerment has been my focus for residents and small businesses and entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. We have had programs that have helped small businesses during the pandemic keep their doors open. Mm-hmm. This is something very important to me because when I talk about skill building, job creation, I know the small businesses are the backbone of our community, especially underserved communities. And so I really do thank both of you of really what you're doing to promote, promote Mm -hmm. 
minority black owned businesses. I really thank you for that because I know those are bold statements Mm -hmm. and I know that that's not easy. And, And I will tell you some of the best products I purchased was at learning about a new vendor at Mm -hmm. the expo. Some of the best restaurants I visited in Chicago, to be honest, has been black owned businesses, Mm -hmm. black owned restaurants. I mean, the food is phenomenal Mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily the food that you think of the traditional black households. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are very, um, Different types of food, different palates, introducing me to different foods that I may not have eaten. And then sometimes I'll try things and I'll say, oh, this is yeah. delicious. Yeah. <laughs> and then I try another one off the menu. Now, this is where I get a little mad, Lauren. I say, now, look, all this food is good. I can't sit and eat all this. <laughs> oh, yes, you can. Look, I'm in that. Look, I'm not I'm not honoring any diets. I'm not honoring anything during Chicago. I, I tell people, look, don't, don't ask me if you don't want me to tell you to go somewhere. Eat it all up. I'm so serious. I don't honor nothing. I don't know what a diet is come Chicago Black Restaurant Week. <laughs> well, Lauren, one thing I want to do is get your list and send it out to our database. Absolutely. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. I want Absolutely. to do that. I would yeah. love that. Yeah. So, ladies, tell us, how do we, now that you mentioned that, how do we find you? How do we find um, Chicago Black Restaurant Week and, and just really all the things that you're doing, Lauren? And Mary, you're, be, you're you know, the Black Women Expo is certainly your you're staple, but you're yes. certainly doing consulting and all type of work um, outside of that. Um, yes. You have certainly helped us in things that we're doing, initiatives within the Chicago Treasurer's Office. So tell me, how can we find you? Well, we are easy to find. Our website is, if you put the Black Women's Expo, we're going to come up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's also bwenext.com. We call it BWE. Uh, our office number is 312-454-6100. But if you put in the Black Women's Expo, you'll see our website and you can go down, scroll down to the bottom and, and join our list and our database and you'll get all of our alerts. And then that will show them how, if they want to become a part of the expo, how they exactly. can do that. Yes. Excellent. Lauren? Sure. So the website is shy, C-H-I, blackrestaurantweek.com. The full list of the 50 businesses are there. I'm going to leave them up there. The addresses are right next to them. Um, And also we're on Instagram at shy black restaurant week. And then we're on Twitter at Chicago B R W. So, and I'm always posting, I'm going to make you hungry. So if you're following the Instagram page, I'm always posting something about food and I'm trying my best to make you constantly want to eat. So you can go visit these businesses. But you know what? And the other thing is too, uh, Madam Treasurer, sometimes a lot of our businesses only need, I don't want to say only, but they just need you to go in and spend some money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you just go in and you never know what you're doing. And so when I hear businesses say something like I've quadrupled my profits in three days or, you know, I've gotten thousands of new, that lets me know that whatever it is that I'm doing is helping you. And that is my ultimate goal service. So yeah, you can find me talking about it all the time. And if you go to my page, you're going to want to eat. That's just how that's going to tell you this as well. Um, as you mentioned, the perception that may have existed mm-hmm. in the past is certainly not what we're seeing today. I that's have right. been to some of the finest dining yes. in Chicago yes. at a black owned restaurant. And I've yes. been to many. Yeah. And so I will tell you, downtown, up north, west side, yes. outside, I have been to fine dining, um, really at Black-owned restaurants. So I'm glad that you pointed that out, Lauren, because mm-hmm. that's a very important point. Very important. People just need to know we're not just soul food, although we corner the market on it. We hold, we hold the patent on it. But we do it <laughs> all, and we do all of it well. So people got to know that. That's important for me to let people know that. So before I go to closing comments, any questions that we have from the audience? This has been an awesome and 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 look, one thing about women, we just know how to keep it going. Lauren <laughs> at the the my camera go out, then the microphone didn't want to work. We just jump in, we do what we have to do. So um this is absolutely wonderful. So right. if there are any questions, um hmm. so I think that we need to. <clears throat> the gift of glamour 
we have a question that um, certainly, Mary, for you to consider as you're yes. looking into the grant that you're doing for tourism. I okay. think that's a great question about some businesses that would love to be a part of the tourism aspect. I think that is awesome. And by the way, thank you, Gift of Glamour, for um, joining us today and wonderful. Um, hope to see the future of your business soon. Yeah, please go to our website and get our email address and you can contact us that way and we'll get back to you. We'll talk about it. And um, I'll ask my team um, if there be no more questions. Um, let's go ahead and have um, the ladies close out comments. Oh, when is the Black Women Women's Expo? And it is, is uh, August second through the fourth uh, at McCormick Place and again in the in the North Building. We're two weeks before the DNC. I can tell you that. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we've been moved around a bit, but we're two weeks right before the Democratic National. This Convention. is a good gear up for us. It's a, a good, good gear yeah, up. It's a good and gear Black up. Restaurant Week is the second week in february lauren yes every single solitary year All right well ladies lauren let's start with you let's close out thank you for joining us i'm excited for both of you and what you're doing thank you for being intentional because i always say diversity is intentional yes. um so thank you for that and what you are doing to really to help uplift communities that need it communities that deserve it um, so thank you for being intentional for investing in our community. So Lauren, if you can close out with your comments and then I'll turn it over to Mary. My final or my closing comment would be if anybody listening under the sound of my voice right now has an idea that you want to develop, please write it down. Please hold it close to you and then make the decision to execute because the only way you're going to have something big or something that you want to leave a legacy with regard to is that you got to start somewhere. It was just an idea for me for Chicago Black Restaurant Week. And now we're going into the 10th year come 2025. So just write it down, hold it close and make your plan to execute. That would be my final words, parting words. I can't wait to the 10th year. You know, we got to do it big. <laughs> yes. And oh. then, Mary, it will be 30? 30 next year. Next year. So, Ooh. 10 Restaurant Week, 30 for Black right. Women Expo next year. We ready, okay? We ready. Mm -hmm. So, my closing remarks would be, this: you know, it starts somewhere for all of us. Believe it or not, even, the you know, the big millionaires, billionaires, they started somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it took one of my really good friends years ago who was a big millionaire. And I was complaining about, well, I'm always around all you guys with all this money and blah, blah, blah. He said, Mary, let me tell you when this happened for me. And it was a lot later in life than I thought. Mm -hmm. So uh, it starts, you know, somewhere and you have to begin, put one foot before the other. If you want to be a part of the expo, we have so many opportunities, not only as vendors, but as speakers and uh, uh, um MCs on our main stage, just mm -hmm. uh, give us a shout. Uh, you can go to tbwe at mgpgevents.com or just go to our website and you can get our email. Thank you so and much for having us, for having me. Uh, this has been great. I, I'm absolutely excited about today. I'm excited about all the comments that we received. And I tell you, while we're throwing out websites and social media handles, don't forget ChicagoCityTreasurer.com, as well as we're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. So make certain that you follow us um, at Chicago Treasurer, Melissa Conyers Urban. This has been an awesome, awesome afternoon. Um, time well spent. Ladies. Yes. Wonderful job. Keep up the great work, and we look forward to the future ahead. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for tuning in to Money Mondays with Melissa. We hope you enjoyed today's session and found value in the topic of discussion. Follow Chicago City Treasurer on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn to stay on top of all upcoming events. Remember, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the Chicago Treasurer's Office at 312-744-3356 or visit www.chicagocitytreasurer.com. We'll see you next time for Money Mondays with Melissa.